I love that song. Welcome back to another chapter of Demon Rising with a Smash. Last time, we just completed the third episode. What is love good for absolutely nothing? And it turns out the demon actually infected Mouse and Matrix. And so they make their way to Mainframe where the ultimate battle is going to take place with Demon's cronies against the Smashers. So this is the start of the three-part war, as I would like to call it, against Demon's infection and the word. Well, we'll see who gets the last word now. All right. Warning, this chapter may contain some character bashing. Reader's discretion is advised. I've been waiting for this for over a decade now. This is the net war I've been longing to make. Demons cronies against the Smashers. There will be some building up along the way, though, so let's dive into this thing. Chapter 8, The Word Wins Over. Story begins when Sam has sent Dot a message to her in the war room. She was monitoring the net, and her partner, Specky, was growing more desperate. And this is based off of the final episode, Sacrifice. Dot, are you there? She heard it from the motherboard, and she pressed a button, putting it on speaker. Yes, Samus. We hadn't heard you from you in seconds. What's wrong? I just received word from my colleague, Mr. Game and Watch. He's been observing over the supercomputer these past cycles, and we just witnessed two catches for the price of one. No. You don't mean... Yes. Both Matrix and Mouse have been infected. And worse still is that they, Demon, Andrea, and Mike are on their way to Mainframe. We're heading there too, but I'm afraid they may get there first. We don't want to be too close to the Guardian Army. We? I have some more of my allies aboard my ship, Dot. We're arriving to aid all of you when the time comes. I'm sure this would be a cakewalk for Mouse since she made the firewall in the first place. Just as I suspected. Hurry, Samus! I'll see what I can do from here. Good luck, Dot, and report to Bob the same. Samus out. In the meantime, the bounty hunter's suspicions were true. Matrix, Mouse, and Dre and Mike were with Damon leading the squad to the soon-to-be powerless system, grinning all the way. She saw the firewall, the small sealed puncture attached to mainframe, then looked over at Mouse. She was quite confident she could easily break through. Specky and Doc kept trying desperately to make an alternative code, a second firewall, to stall the hacker. It's no good! Every encryption code is too complicated! We've got to keep trying, if... When Mouse gets here, we're completely defenseless! She knows the access codes, we have to change it! But, but, but it's impossible! No, there has to be something we can do! 98% infected the entire net. Outside of the tense atmosphere in the principal office, Enzo spoke to Lucari about the partial restoration of his long-lost father. He was anxious for her to see his dad. He led her to him, and she watched the little sprightly catch with a bundle of gnolls that shaped a skinny, colorful, bipedal figure. The green one, formerly known as Megabyte's pet Nibbles, was the head of that strange creature. The kid once told her that Hex was able to compile him. She thought she lost her powers, but ever since she was inside the Egyptian tomb game, she was only able to manipulate Knowles telepathically. She actually thanked Doc for her father giving birth to her from that explosion that destroyed the Twin City. Akari couldn't be more pleased. See if you can catch my fastball! He un elongated an arm to catch it like Reed Richards. You'll have to do better than that! How phenomeric! She grew curious on the ongoing construction beside them. Hey, what's that over there? That is a gateway, Akari. Its portal will lead to various systems. We must make sure it works properly so the citizens would evacuate once the super virus accesses here. I see. She should have known since she saw one inside the silicon tour. Megabyte captured Enzo in his experiment to make sure it led to the supercomputer like he desired. 
she was taking a break because she, she was mourning over Electrode. Well, actually, the episodes are in wrong order, but I prefer it this way. And she was using Dratini and Dragonair, not Dragonite. I don't like Dragonite. As well as Mewtwo's Charizard. Just then, the door sent in and out popped Fong. How is Enzo taking their transformation? Well... Hi, Fong! That's a gnome monster now! It's so cool! He can change shape and things! Hey, there's Frisket! Quite well, actually. Suddenly, there was a rumble in the sky. Now what? Several CPOs soared into the goldenrod sky, attaching sensors which activated another cover. A second firewall. That should slow Mouse down. Clever girl. Akari couldn't agree more. Who? Dot? You should be very proud of her. I am. And Enzo. He's a fine boy. He's grown so much. Ah, uh, well, there's something you should know. About Enzo, or... Or should I say Matrix? Okay, I'm out. Nice to meet you, Wellman. You too, Wakari. She gave him a wave and she met Enzo frolicking with Frisket. Then she got an urgent call on her tablet. It was Samus. Akari, we got a problem. Demon is breaking through. Figures. How are you guys? We should be about a light year away. We had to take a slight detour into another system to escape the infection spreading. We'll be on our way very shortly. Hurry, Samus. The firewall that Dot put her code into have already been destroyed. Mouse succeeded, and Akari was scared as ever. Game & Watch, who waddled to her side, was also as frightened. Although no one could see his emotions, he kept letting out some noisy beeps. He became silent again as he saw the large hover vehicle pull up. Meanwhile, Samus and the Smashers approached the fleet after going into warp drive. They arrived at their destination at last, with Damon and her minions obscuring their path. There it is. Mainframe. There's the light blue energy sea, the system floating over it. There is no turning back. Falco and Kirby offered to distract the remaining guardians while she and her crew would take on the super virus. But Marth and Roy volunteered to anxiously fight them back. Roy himself said his blood's boiling and Marth couldn't wait to show off his prowess to prove he's not too so inferior compared to Link. She accepted, but only if the Hero of Time would have a chance to go with them. Mart's heart sank. He did not like the sound of that fact he'd be working alongside his bitter rival. You'd better behave yourselves, you two, or else you'll wind up being deleted and spend eternity in loathing. Fight well beside each other, not against each other. That made the pompous highly and the nerve-wrecked blue hair hesitate. I don't know what else to call him, okay? She then ordered a transport to Falco's ship while he takes them to the system they were just in, the desert port. Kirby, you're staying with me. You, we need you for this fight. Falco was ready as soon as the teleportation was successful. He shot out a Nova bomb toward the infected fleet. There was a large loud blast causing the army to look up and see a few cruisers descend sharply. The East pilot soared in and made a few maneuvers amongst the battleships. Mouse drew out her katana and Matrix loaded gun. No, Sparky. We have the word to carry out once Mouse hacks into mainframe. The Guardians can take care of him, right? Go after the bird and make him hear the word. He automatically obliged. It's work. <clears throat> it's working. You're all clear, Samus. Stay frosty, boys. Falco saluted and the Guardians gave chase. Meanwhile, Bob's car landed near the construction site. He and Hex left and he was very wary. We're out of time. We'll never evacuate the city now. Hey, I thought I saw a second firewall. It won't hold Mouse for long, and who said we were evacuating the city? But I thought, uh, where's a GameCube when you need one? She saw her brother with Hex. And so get away from her! But sis, yes, yeah, sis, and you could stop it with that sis thing. But I simply adore children. But I could never eat a whole one. Uh, 
I don't get that joke. A virus eating a kid? Sick! It was a joke! I'm joking! No one seemed convinced, not even when the game was about to come down. Oh, great. Great! Bob, do not fight me on this one. What are you talking about? She knelt down to her brother. Matrix, I need you to do something for me. The smite smiled from ear to ear. This was a first that Dot actually depended on him. Whatever it was, he was all for it, feeling proud. It's really important, and only you can do this. I want you to go into the game and stay there. I want you to change your icon into game sprite mode and stay in the game until you grow up. Until you are as big as Matrix. What? You cannot be serious. Don't worry, Bob. I'll come back and save you all. Like I did before. Enzo. Matrix! Enzo, please listen to me. You are not Matrix. You don't have to do this. Th there is another way. There has to be another way. Hack slash plan for 4.104. Brisket, go with them, boy. Dot, you can't do this. Think about what you're doing. I have. Come back. Save us. You can do it. Okay, go. Quickly. Dad? I'll be back soon. I love you. Slash took the kid under his arm. The dog whimpered at hack. Quickly NYC is on 8306 Broadway in Elmhurst. Yeah, whatever. Okay, away. Google, shut up. Stars. A lot of places have changed okay, their Google, hours shut up. temporarily, so you might want to check with them. Ugh, I hate distractions. Flash took the kid under his arm. The dog whimpered at hack. What? I get the dog? Each of the robot's rocket boosters launched the group into the air. Enzo looked down sadly at his friends one more time before he was engulfed by the GameCube's radical energy. Landed at level 1 in Broadway, Enzo, Frisket, Hack, and Slash found themselves on top of an elongated bridge over a calm, murky river. This is the game I actually made up. Because Sacrifice failed to show what the game is. So, think of it as a certain Lamage that was more prevalent later in Smash. What a coincidence. The city itself was full of life and the game turned into night. Many skyscrapers towered above the heroes' heads as they wandered the foreign place. Where are we? Clearly he was still shocked upon his limited experience in navigating games. Eh, I don't know. This is the game where we should lose, right? Vaguely remembering Dot's orders. What should we do next if we get nullified? Frisket sniffed the air, then suddenly the gang heard an obnoxious noise. The R-Wing was landing next to them, and as the engine shut down, two individuals hopped out. They were Fox and Young Link. Um, are you guys the users? What? No, of course not. I suppose we haven't met, have we? You're Enzo, correct? Y yeah I am. And you are? He also wondered why Frisket wasn't attacking them. He was calm and collected as he never saw him before. I am Fox McCloud, lead pilot of the Star Fox team. This here is my partner, um... Uh... Link Jr.? Um, I guess that's alright. He felt belittled since Fox was introducing him as a lower rank in front of a kid who was roughly his own age. Alvin and Merrick! I've never seen many sprites my own age before! They shook hands, and young Link was no longer humiliated. We should get going. We got a game to win. But I thought Dot said when they seemed to hear an explosion, but it wasn't. One of the Mako reactors became operational, extracting the energy from the life stream. What was that? There! A power plant was has become fully functional. <clears throat> the user might be in there. Let's do it. Reboot. And so tapped on his gold icon twice, which turned himself into a different character. His hairdo was still the same, but instead he had blanched skin, wearing a white tank top and black boxers. 
He also gained the ability to throw devastating punches. Cool! You changed! Fox and Young Link were amazed on his new stats. How'd you do it? Well, it's simple. You simply double-click on your icon and say the magic word. Watch again. He did the same thing to frisk it. He turned into a dark red dog with menacing fangs and ravenous eyes. Hack and Slash temporarily disappeared. Where's Hack and Slash? Hey, that looks fun! Let's see what we can do! Young Link and Fox did the same. In a flash, they too were different. The Star Fox leader looked at his reflection over the river, and he realized he had dark brown fur, some bulky muscles on his arms, and a large blaster where his right limb was supposed to be. Whoa! I got muscles! Tried out his new weapon. The gears rotated. He aimed and shot an enormous bullet that blasted a mailbox into pieces. This gun is fantastic! I wish I could have one of those in my later missions. Young Link had like a big sword on his back. A lot of armor. A lot of muscle tone. Short sleeve black shirt. Some tights. Spiky hair. What was more amazing was that gigantic sword. This thing is heavy! This kind of reminds me of the big Goron sword! Where are the two robots? Uh, right here. He turned himself into a human with black sleek hair, wearing an outfit almost the same as Young Link's. He was very different than the others, and he became translucent and was hovering. S Slash! You're an apparition! Was I deleted? Then he was saw his partner in crime look the same way he did, only different. Hack was also translucent, but <laughs> he was a girl. <laughs> what? What's so funny? Uh, Hack, you shouldn't look at yourself. What do I look like? Before Slash found his words, Enzo and the others heard another rumble coming from the Mako plant. Come on! We don't have much time. Fox let the others in. I don't believe in the no-win scenario. I need to cover my options. But Enzo's an option now, isn't he? And so are you. I want you to form a portal to a safe system and get the hell out of here. What? What? Why don't you just tell me what's going on? Have I gone mad or is it just you? You both seem pretty mad to me. Demon Watch nodded. Thought resumed her plan. Damon needs you to complete her function, so... So I go and hide in the net. Exactly. And what happens here in mainframe? You finished, Dad? Every system is in targeting. It's a trap. You're gonna activate the gateway as soon as she crosses it. Single source, multiple targets will bring her cloak to the far reaches of the net. But everyone would still be infected. Without Damon's control, the net may recover. This is Thin Dot. This is all I got. <sighs> She's always so resourceful with that damned organizer. Just then, the firewall began to finally collapse. Dot touched the communicator on her headset and spoke into the mic. Fleet Commanders, this is it. Blow the Guardian Armada out of the sky before it enters our airspace. Everyone, including Akari, looked above and saw Damon approaching the principal office. The teenager was just as scared as Game & Watch. It was like gazing at Satan, if he happens to be a female. But Dot never faltered. Bob, stand at the doors. If you won't leave, then you'll at least be bait. <laughs> Live bait. Hex followed him, then Akari. Dad, stand by. When she enters the gate, hit send. Fong, you're with me. Let's meet our guests. Everyone, stay calm. Easy for you to say. Oh, dear. She was just a few feet off the ground when she stopped and greeted the group of victims. Fox, Enzo, and the rest of the gang ran to the entrance of the massive building. From the looks of the city, lights were flickering within the buildings. It was a sure sign they were losing power. Plant, however, was not affected. What's going on? 
it looks like that building is powering down the city. We need to stop it before we get erased. Enzo remembered a similar experience as he watched a readme file when Mainframe was shutting down thanks to a corrupted file downloaded by Megabyte. Quickly, we must hurry. Along the way, an alarm came off, signaling there were intruders. As a response, people wearing gas masks and dark uniforms shone their red beams. They hid themselves in a corridor. If we stay together, we're sitting ducks. We'll have to split up. But how? They got us cornered. Just then, the Shinra soldiers heard moaning. Two ghosts emerged and were taunting the game sprites. Ooh, you are all making a mistake. Uh, yeah, you're absorbing the power of our planet. You will face deletion for what you're doing. Hey, we have a job to do. Stay out of our way or you'll face deletion. We were one of you. We first belonged to Soldier, but then we quit. We realized what we did was wrong, and we died because of our sins. Now you shall too. How do they even know us? Who cares? They are ghosts. They should never do harm to us. Shoot them! The diversion was working. Weapons had no effect. Okay, here's our chance. Let's move. They ran up the stairs while fighting some more soldiers. Enzo used his fists to knock out one plus his teeth. Young Link used a spin attack to scatter the enemies every which way. Brisket mauled a few, while Fox made a frenzy with his new gun. When the coast was clear, they trekked up to the control room. Meanwhile, Damon made her acquaintances to each of them. She never even cared all of the long-range guns. Hello. You must be docked. Matrix has told me all about you. Then you know what I think about viruses. Fong, the wise one. It is an honor to finally meet you. Goldbot made a slight bow to her. And there is my messenger. And she looked at Hex. Hexadecimal! You have turned into an abomination! You are a disgrace to your kind! The delivery caused the virus to sulk in guilt, although Akari wasn't sure how she actually knew Hex. Perhaps super viruses are aware of their existence? She thought. She's not your kind anymore! This was not good. There is no need for anger. Soon we'll be one. Joined in the work. As soon as her Tomei contact Akari grabbed Game and Watch and ran straight toward the gateway without looking back. The black sprite leaped out of her arms, landed on the button. Woman hesitantly pressed, and the portal was activated. As the infection was closing in, both people went through and disappeared. The rest of them were assimilated almost instantly, and the null scattered away. Spread also hit Turbo. Arrgh! She's here. User, have mercy on the net. All the sprites rose wearing the same smile. Especially Dot. My lady, Mainframe is at your service. Yes, it is time you are united with your friends and family. She spread an arm and a Zoom room came down. There was Mike, Mouse, Matrix, and Andrea. Of course, the noisy television sprite expressed his excitement, and for once, no one faced. Oh, there's no place like home. Mainframe has heard the word. Well, we haven't. Damon looked back her, looked behind her, and Samus made the counter. She aimed her arm cannon straight at her, and the smashers were on all sides, exiting her ship. Mario Brothers stood at her left, Mewtwo... Eh, they're all information. Are you here trying to threaten us? To dispel the word? We will not be tempted by your offer, demon! So, we meet at last, face to face. You may have intimidated me by brainwashing my best friend, but we would be deleted rather than go by your pathetic word. 
We're here to challenge you zealots to a tournament. A tourney that'll determine the fate for the entire net. We want to fight you fairly, rather than go all reckless in a bloody war. If we win, then we will have the privilege to challenge you in a duel and delete you. If you win, then you carry out your function and let Bob fulfill it. That alone made Samus' skin crawl beneath her cyber suit, but strong woman composed herself. I am the interplanetary bounty hunter Samus Aaron, and I hereby challenge you against the word. Do you accept or yield? I accept. Michelle? The little bipedal television emerged from the crowd, and Samus picked a fighter from her group. Luigi? That made the green plumber squirm and hold his hat tightly against his head. I choose Luigi. Very well. I shall take you to a location of my choosing. Agreed. Everyone stood by as another Zoom room took both brawlers. Luigi was hesitant and he tried to run, but he couldn't go anywhere. They appeared just a few sectors away from one of the massive golf courses. They were standing in a sand dune and Mike retained his thrill. Let the battle begin! Mike kept on jabbering about nonsense, but also taunting him as he was trying to get Luigi to beat him. In hindsight, the word meant peace and unity, but Damon's infection influenced him to eliminate those that resisted. So, Mike used a few playful taps, then he upped the ante as he gave him a few kicks. This actually startled the guy. He pushed him back desperately as he swung his arms wildly at him. Luigi was taken aback by Mike's loudspeaker as he kept yelling directly at him. He was holding her poor, his poor ears in agony as they grew red as a beet. Then, not taking any more of Mike's bickering, an irritatingly loud persona, he drastically picked up and threw some seeds toward him, which did nothing. Thinking he had no ways of defending himself, Luigi ran across the fields like a coward. Mike then gave chase, continually doing the same thing. There was a sore sight for Samus, but very amusing to her opponents. Never taking the blame for his brother, Mario grew bold. He took a war pipe, and he was there. Jumped into it. Luigi was in a fatal position, and Mario stood in front of him. Are you ready for a beatdown? Let's -a go. Put his dukes toward the bully. Did the same, and then they exchanged fists and kicks. Mike got close enough, Mario grabbed and tossed him aside like a rag doll. The fight wore on. Mario's attacks were more powerful. From a distance, he shot fireballs, which was strange, considering he didn't have a fire flower. When he, was, when he sent his weak opponent into the air, he kissed it more often as he did the coin punch. He also performed the Mario tornado as he wanted to cause more injury and force him away, but Mike still kept at it. On the other side of the spectrum, Mike's intimidation never worked on the Red Plumber, who was undoubtedly a lot more steadfast than his brother. Figured his best bet was shattering the screen. Mario's cape that temporarily blinded him, he landed a punch that sent him flying like a crazed bullet bill. Mike dissipated like a star and wound up only the user knows where. Mario won the first round and he did his signature pose. Looking around, he could hardly see Luigi as his uniform blended well within the grassy environment. He was still in a huddled format, and Mario just lent a friendly hand to him. He calmed down after he saw his brother. From that gesture, he figured it was safe, then he grabbed Mario's hand. Mary gave Luigi a charade, but it showed some concern, thinking if he was all right. Luigi nodded in confirmation, and together they both re-entered the warp pipe, emerging back beside Samus' ship. Damon summoned her next entry, who was Dot. However, something was different. Uh, if you've seen season three, well, actually season two at the very end, you would see her bazooka, and she had it again. So, for Samus, I know a thing or two about protecting your own brethren. Matrix and the Word are with me. My lady and I would not stand the likes of you! Luigi yelped, and Mario co covered him as he was scurrying back. All of a sudden, a gigantic ape stepped up to the plate. He roared and slammed his fists against his chest. 
For once, Donkey Kong was determined to defend his old-time rival. He fixed his wide eyes on the dame and the fight was on. Meanwhile, Fox led the group up further to the power plant. Brisket carried Enzo. Young Link was right behind him. Whew! The ghost should keep the Shinra busy. All we need to do now is shut down the Mako plant and destroy it. There must be an auto-destructive mechanism around here somewhere. Fox searched the place. Wonder where the user is in all this? There it is! I can deactivate the plant's core from here. Then I can set the self-destruct sequence. But we gotta be quick. We need to escape with our lives. I'll call my Arwing when the time is right. Arwing? Fox's ship. Cool! These gunmen better show some- Ugh, I heard a buzzing noise. Those gunmen better show some respect! You said it! We could have been goners! So what's next, Fox? The roof caved in. There was a scorpion. Basically, it's like the first boss in the game. Only it's the Smashers. Ugh, he used his reflector to deflect the beam. Guardian Scorpion. When Junior made some slashes at it. They were quick, but they had to stay on target as the scorpion kept moving. He used his bombs, his fire arrows. There's a target symbol aimed at Enzo. Frisket's fangs were no good. Although, Frisket was shot. Heads up! Tail unleashed its devastating fury. Fox kept up the strategy like it did before. He used his Firefox move. Little to no effect. When Junior easily sliced them apart, Fox made a few rounds with his blaster arm cannon. His tail was following Enzo. Blood onto its back, he jumped it off when the attack was activated, and eventually blowing the scorpion smithereens. Everyone congratulated him, and Frisket was fine as he ran back toward them. However, the game didn't lift yet. It looks like the game isn't over yet. We still have to escape from the power plant, though. If that's not the user, then who is? Auto-destruct sequence is now active. How do we get out of here? I'll call the R-Wing! His fighter jet emerged nanoseconds later, although it was taking some damage because of the enemy fire. So they went into it. Guys, you two are ghosts! You can go through anything! We gotta move it! The R-Wing flew away with the two bots on its tail. The team set out to find the user. Below them, they saw titans of all sorts demolish the plant as their weapons were wreaking havoc. It's those super bosses, of course. We're going in after him. They saw like an angel in the air and it was heading to space. Hack, Slash, I want you to lift Link Jr. and Enzo toward him. We're only going to go as far as the Exosphere. We have to win this game! He ejected Young Link, but the other sprite hesitated. But my sister said I should stay in the game! That I should compile up and be as big as Matrix! How long is that gonna take? I don't know, maybe several cycles? I just need to change myself into game sprite mode and stay with the game. So that means if you win, we won't see you again? I need the little sprite change. I need you to think about that for a nano, Enzo. Do you really want to leave your friends behind? Your family? Do you want to become a hothead like Matrix? Or would you rather stay with us and create your own destiny? It's your choice. Do you want to win this game or not? Uh, Matrix? Uh, I'm coming. I'll think about it. Went with hack. And basically, it's like Safer Sephiroth. At least it's Shadow Flare, but the R-Wing and the Ghost scattered. Fox blew counterclockwise position. User became more distant, gained altitude. Vermilion Orb grew massive in a matter of nanos. How were they supposed to resist such an attack like this? Except in the Arwing, they'd surely be incinerated. Never give up. Trust your instincts. Peppy's words ran in Fox's mind. It was the supernova. He casted his fears aside and aimed straight toward the user's chest. Link Jr. kept throwing bombs at it. Enzo slashed the thick abdomen. 
Fox shadowed Nova Bomb dead center and exploded on contact. The user dropped his arms, holding its midsection. Everyone, emergency mo maneuvers! On the double! He lifted the two kids away while the Arlen boosted as the supernova dropped toward the Seraph. Although... Link held up his blade and did the final move. The limit break. Can't believe Link Jr. was doing this. The world was saved and the clashing giants disappeared the same way. Near the gateway, DK was standing up to Dot with her butch, butch bazooka. She fired a few shots, which hit the thick gate. However, he managed to grab her, toss her, and even do a headbutt stunning her. His only way to win was for her to lose that weapon. Dot was a lightweight like Mike, but her shooter made her more unbalanced. Size and ferocity were his greatest strengths, and eventually, the bazooka was too much for the muscular monkey. By the time she was vulnerable, Donkey Kong grabbed her in his strong arm and leapt and clanked up the circular building with Dot screeching all the way. <laughs> Think of it as a King Kong ripoff. A uh, shout out. Matrix shot his gun and Bob used his glitch powers from his palms, draining some of his energy. He faded out more than he did before, putting him in a state of shock. DK reached the top, then threw Dot to the side and wound up as he was swinging his arm. Miss Matrix got up and ran, and Samus yelled up, Don't let her get away! The ape closed in on her, thrashing through the walls as he thumped in the halls. She was about to unlock the door to the war room while she was speaking something through her headset, but she never finished as DK made the final blow. His giant punch sent her flying toward another wall just a few feet away. She was buried underneath the debris and the doors were open. The ape let out a roar, scaring all the hapless binomes away, even Specky. Round two was over, but the heat but the heat would be turned up to massive proportions. Phew, glad I got that out of the way. Anyway, it's about why I picked the game. In the reboot episode Sacrifice, the game wasn't shown. Just Enzo in a small group. So I made one up. Concept was not easy, as I had some ideas but weren't relatable to the characters, especially Frisket. Once the game lands, there are the songs for that. Cloud was young Link, Tifa was Enzo, as you might have already guessed. And, wow, Smash Bros. 4 and Ultimate, they actually had Cloud. And I've made this before it happened. Talk about a coincidence, but, uh, I don't like Seven that much. I like Advent Children, but, uh, I'm not too crazy about the original or the remake. And I heard it was bad. So, now don't get me wrong, I absolutely like Luigi, even more than Mario, but I just wanted to give him that cowardly persona he's well known for. After all, this could take place before Luigi's Mansion. And I believe it's true when Tree School described him as having general anxiety disorder. Also, you probably would have guessed the reference when DK made his move on Dot. It was just something that occurred to me. I'm not too crazy about King Kong or the remake with Jack Black, but eh. I just wanted to use it as a shout out. Personally, I like Hannah Banana. Hannah Banana in a Family Guy. Well, that's a huge roadblock removed, and now the fight continues next time. Until then, this is the Ekron Writer signing out. Stay tuned for part two of the Net War. Until next time.